Before we begin, let's quickly recap the definitions from the previous lesson. A scalar quantity has a magnitude and units of measurement. A good example of a scalar quantity is mass. This scooter has a mass of 200 kilograms. The magnitude is 200 and it's measured in kilograms. On the other hand, a vector quantity has a magnitude, units of measurement, and a direction. The same scooter could easily provide 500 newtons of force forward, where 500 is the magnitude, newtons is the unit, and forward is the direction. You should keep these definitions in mind as we discuss distance and displacement throughout this video. To start, distance is something that we encounter in everyday life. The distance to the beach, the length of a volleyball court, the distance you've grown your hair out since last year. Let's take this intuitive definition of distance and formalise it so that we can answer physics problems. Distance is a scalar quantity which measures how far apart two points are. Since distance is a scalar, it has a magnitude and units. Although we commonly measure distance in kilometres or centimetres, the SI unit is the metre. Thus, in physics, we should always write distance in metres. Let's look at an example of distance. Do you remember Mark Brent from the previous video? Tonight is a special night. He's going on a date with Lotus Lang. When she gets in the taxi, she asks how far away the restaurant is. Since Mark knows she doesn't care about the direction, he tells her it's only 2.6 kilometres away. In this case, 2.6 is the magnitude and kilometre is the unit. They arrive at the restaurant, where a table has already been reserved. As they take a seat, Mark pricks his ears to the distant shriek of a missile. Peering out the window, he notices birds fleeing in the twilight. Without a second's respite, he makes up an excuse. He left his phone in the taxi, then careens out the door. He tears open his shirt to reveal his alter ego, Vector Man. Above the clouds, Vector Man spots the missile heading straight for the city's nuclear reactor. It'll pack a punch. It's 15 metres long. Let's take another look at the missile's length, 15 metres. This is also a scalar, since it has a magnitude of 15 and units of metres. In general, the length of an object is a scalar quantity. Using his X-ray vision, Vector Man scrutinises the internal structure of the missile. He realises that it'll detonate if it comes within 50 metres of the reactor's core. Once again, this quantity is a distance. It doesn't matter which direction the missile approaches from, all that matters is its proximity to the nuclear reactor. Sometimes, knowing the length or distance is simply not enough. Suppose that you're at the beach and you're looking for an ice cream truck. You know it's 500 metres away, but that doesn't tell you exactly where it is. What really matters is which direction to walk so that you can get some hard-earned ice cream. Similarly, in physics, we might need to find the displacement of an object. Displacement is a vector quantity which measures how the position of an object has changed. As an equation, displacement is the difference between the final position and the initial position of the object. Since displacement is a vector, it has a magnitude, units of measurement, and a direction. To understand what this means, let's double back to the duo. Lotus Lang, being hungry and impatient, has already ordered. She tried calling Mark's phone, but it went straight to voicemail. Why is he taking so long? Maybe she should start eating without him. She calls again, and Mark finally picks up. Exasperated, she asks where in the world he has scurried off to. Mark makes an excuse. He had to chase after the taxi. 
and now he's two kilometres away from the restaurant. Saying this only aggravates Lotus. Two kilometres where? She doesn't want to know how far away he is. She wants to know exactly where he is. Mark seems to be avoiding her question. Lotus wants to know Mark's displacement, which is two kilometres above the restaurant. By not disclosing his direction, Mark has hidden important information from her. This highlights the difference between distance and displacement. One is a scalar and the other is a vector. Distracted by the call, Vector Man lost track of the missile. He flies 500 metres south and continues searching. Then he flies one kilometre north, where he spots it again. To find his current location, Vector Man needs to think about where he's travelled. To begin, he flew 500 metres south, but then he went 1,000 metres in the opposite direction, north. In total, he travelled a distance of 1,500 metres, but his final position is 500 metres north. Since displacement is the change in position, Vector Man's displacement is 500 metres north. After regaining his bearings, Vector Man catches up with the missile. He guides it upwards, into the atmosphere, where it explodes high above the clouds. Not only are the people in the Big Apple safe again, they also get an impromptu fireworks display. Vector Man thinks to himself, who could have launched the missile? Maybe he could follow the heat trail to the source and catch the culprit. Then his phone calls him back to reality. He's forgotten about his dinner date with Lotus. Let's spend a moment discussing how distance and displacement are represented in physics. In equations, distance is usually written as lowercase d. Since it's a scalar, we only need to show its magnitude and units. Meanwhile, displacement is usually denoted by a lowercase s with an arrow on top. You'll also see this on the HSC physics formula sheet. The arrow is a subtle reminder that displacement is a vector. When answering questions, you can state the direction using words such as left or use bearings such as south. It's important that we use different letters for distance and displacement so that we don't confuse them. It's also important to know the Greek letter delta, which looks like a triangle. In physics, delta represents change in. This gives us another method of writing displacement. Here, x represents the position, so delta x refers to the change in position. Thus, we can use an equation to show the definition of displacement. Before we finish, let's examine the key differences between distance and displacement. Distance is always greater than or equal to zero. Think about it. You cannot drive a distance of minus two kilometres. On the other hand, displacement can take any value. A positive displacement means keep going or in the same direction. Meanwhile, if the displacement is zero, the object's position doesn't change. It remains in the same spot. Finally, a negative value means turn around or in the opposite direction. As you can see, the positive or negative sign indicates what you should do with the direction of the vector. To explain this further, let's consider Vector Man's excursion. After leaving the restaurant, he flew eight kilometres to reach the missile. Then he travelled six kilometres back to the restaurant. To find the total distance that he travelled, we just add these numbers and get 14 kilometres. Next, remember that displacement is the change in an object's position. Since Vector Man started and finished at the restaurant, there is no net change in his location. Therefore, his displacement is zero. 
As we can see, it's possible for an object to move about but have zero displacement. In general, the distance that an object travels is always greater than or equal to the magnitude of its displacement. Let's pause for a moment to consider the types of questions you might be asked in exams. Questions will ask things like, what are the differences between distance and displacement? What distance did an object move? What is the object's displacement? When calculating displacement, you'll need to consider what direction the object travelled in. Don't forget to include units and a direction in your answer. To wrap things up, let's look at a sample question. Pause the video here to read the question and think about your answer. Since this is a long worded question, we should start by underlining all the key information provided, that is 10 metres north, 20 metres north, 40 metres in the opposite direction, and continues for 45 metres. Next, we should draw a diagram and decide on a sign convention, since this will make the question a lot easier to answer. Here, we've chosen north to be upward, since that makes the most sense. The first part of this question asks for the total distance travelled by the ball. So, we add the individual distances 10 metres, 20 metres, 40 metres and 45 metres to get a total distance of 115 metres. Notice how we ignored the direction that the ball was kicked? We did this because distance is a scalar quantity, which doesn't include a direction. The second part of this question is about displacement. Since displacement is a vector, we will need to carefully consider the direction that the ball moves. Thankfully, we've already shown this on the diagram. As we can see, the ball moved 30 metres north and then 85 metres south. Since they are in opposite directions, the magnitudes will subtract, giving us a total magnitude of 55 metres. But 55 metres in what direction? Since the ball moved further south than it did north, the ball must have ended south of the centre line. Thus, the ball's displacement is 55 metres south. Let's revise what we've covered in this lesson. In the HSC physics course, you will need to understand the key differences between distance and displacement and perform calculations involving both quantities. Distance is a scalar quantity which measures how far apart two points are. It has SI units of metres and is usually represented in equations by lowercase d. Meanwhile, displacement is a vector quantity which measures the change in an object's position. It also has SI units of metres and is represented by a lowercase s with an arrow on top. In physics, the Greek letter delta means change in. We can use delta notation to represent displacement. Distance cannot be a negative number. On the other hand, displacement can be negative. The minus sign means in the opposite direction. If an object returns to its initial position, its displacement is zero. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on physics, check out our video on speed and velocity.